Oh no, there's a problem with the queue suite that I need to address in this video. But wait, isn't the queue suite like the best business class out there in today's civil aviation? Well, largely yes, and in fact, I have a list of 5 key factors that made the airline what it is today. Follow along with me in this video where I'm flying from Doha to Stockholm in the aforementioned queue suite in the brand new Airbus A350-900 to find out what are all these concerns and first I was talking about. The first factor to the airline's success is none other than the airport it is based in. The Hamad International Airport opened in 2014. At that time, even now, it has some of the best terminal layouts and efficiency. I was going through the transit area for security check when arriving from a previous flight. That was so easy and such a breeze. You know, you are in a world-class airport the moment you step off the plane. I definitely can't say the same with some other Middle Eastern airports. Oh, and Qatar's lounges are built along with the terminal. The integration of airport facilities and the airline are so seamless. As a business class passenger of Qatar and One World Alliance member, you have access to this massive Al Majan business class lounge. I have a separate video touring the entire lounge for you. Go check it out and find out why it deserves so much praises and attention from all business class travelers. In short, Qatar Airways ground service is excellent. As an airline that relies heavily on transit passengers, this factor alone can either make or break the entire customer experience that the airlines have worked so hard for. A quick side track to the Qatar travel store near the atrium, where you will find its first class seat. I have a video of this coming up soon, so make sure to subscribe if you want to know my honest opinion about it. Oh, it's juicy, but I'm not gonna spot it here for you. Just wait for that video next time. Enough said, it's time for boarding. Let's look at the cabin and seat map we got today. The business class is split into two cabins in this Airbus A350-900. The larger one in front has six rows of fours in a one two one layout. The smaller one behind has three rows of fours. All seats are pretty private and have direct aisle access. True window seats like 1A and 1K are closer to the window, but they're facing backwards. While those closer to the aisle are facing forward, I personally think that this is a good trade-off. It would be a double whammy if there are seats facing backward and closer to the aisle. I'm looking at you, Etihad. The cabin looks gorgeous and I haven't even talked about the seat yet. This classic Qatar color theme looks very easy on the eye. That burgundy color theme with multiple shades of grey. I don't know anyone anywhere who's able to present and market this burgundy color so damn well. The cabin would look more glamorous and spacious if all the overhead bins were closed. Oh well, the cabin crew was so proactive having them all open for passengers prior to boarding. This is a second factor that puts the airline into everyone's bucket list, the Q suite itself. It was revolutionary when it was introduced to the world back in 2017, and it is still considered as such today. It is the first business class to have doors. Gimmick or not, you decide, but the Q suite has set the new standard for business class experience. Delta Airlines actually had their new Delta One business class suite around the same time as the Q suite. But most would argue that Qatar Airways did a better job here. Nonetheless, it is among the pioneers in business class seats with doors. Today, airlines like ANA, British Airways, Air France, and Etihad all have their own versions of business suites. This is going to be the new trend moving forward. Just look at this seat. So many bells and whistles. It also has so much storage space. And later, once I put the seats into the bed mode, you will see how much space there really is at the footrest. The tray table below the IFE screen can be pulled out like that, and it is pretty wide and sturdy. But let's look at the menu. One for the meal and a separate one for the wine list. Feel free to pause the video if you want to take a closer look as always. Well, this also brings me to the third factor to the airline's success, its soft product. As we are flipping through the wine list, notice how well presented it is. This is what I call paying attention to detail, a very simple concept, yet hard to master for most airlines. The food also tasted pretty dang good. Presentation is one thing, and its taste is another. They have nailed it here once again. I'm having the tomato soup and the Arabic meze. I've decided to skip my main dish as I had a crap ton of food in the past 24 hours already, both in the previous Qatar flight and in the lounge. But there's always room for dessert. And here's the chocolate glazed passion fruit cake. If I didn't care much about my health, I would have had like 10 of this. We were talking about soft product. Well, the food was not all. We also have the amenity bag. Qatar has partnered with the luxury brand Diptyque. And the good thing is that the airline is constantly changing the bag design. 
If you know how often they do that, tell me in the comments, because to me, it looks like they change several times a year. Their in-flight entertainment is no slack either. Having around 3,000 options, it will be hard not to find something that you enjoy. But if that happens, Qatar offers one hour of free Wi-Fi to all of its free to join Privilege Club member. So make sure you have all the login details handy. But what if you want Wi-Fi for the full flight? It's only 10 US dollars as of now, available in most flights, especially those with Q-Suite. Now you see why people love all their soft products? These are all the discretional services an airline can choose to do really well or simply not bothered. It is evident to me that Qatar has spent no effort in getting a top score in this regard. With the cabin slowing down after the meal, I wanted to check out the bed. Let's put the seat into the bed mode. Not too shabby, isn't it? At this point, something interesting happened. The cabin crew saw me making my own bed and offered to put a duvet and to set up my bed properly for me. So I went to the laboratory instead, and here I am. A little roomier than most other airlines in business class, I would say. And when I got back to my seat, I found my bed nicely made and waiting for me. As I was appreciating how well made the bed was, I was once again approached by the cabin crew. This time inquiring if I would like them to prepare the double bed for me to take more pictures. Well, I have to say yes, as this is extra material for my video. I was pleasantly surprised that happened. The cabin crew noticed that I was filming my flight, figured that I would appreciate if I have that extra material off the double bed. And this is the fourth factor that sets Qatar Airways apart from most other airlines, their crew. Not only were they anticipating passengers' needs, they were also very proud of their queue suites and their work and did not feel that they had to restrict photography when circumstances were reasonable. And in this case, the small cabin behind was pretty empty, and offering me this opportunity was a win-win situation. And see, I'm happy to tell you this right now. But even in my previous flight with their absolutely worst business class seat, they didn't seem to mind me taking videos either. I guess the photography thing comes from the higher up, that they really didn't mind reasonable amounts of free marketing and promotion as long as I don't cause disturbance to others. And the airline really gets this. If they believe that they have a good product, then there's nothing to hide. A good product such as this Q-Suite double bed is the airline's crown jewel right now, and I can definitely see why. Qatar is not only the first airline that has business class suites, but also the first to have double bed business class suites. Premium airline seats have come such a long way and moving really fast the past 10 years. Prior to the Q-Suite, there were not that many double beds in the sky, let alone seats with doors. It is going to be really challenging for any airlines to come close to this level of sophistication. After some private time I had with the double bed, I came back to my humble little suite 1K. Feeling all cozy on the bed made by the crew with ample amounts of legroom. Not double the room size though, but for one person, this Q suite is as good as any airline can get. The only real competition I see right now is from ANA. If you want my take on that business class, then stay tuned to my channel, as I'll be flying in ANA's brand new 777 with their industry leading first and business class real soon. Speaking of points redemption, and this is also the fifth factor that placed Qatar Airways onto everyone's radar. Qatar is quite generous in making more seats available for redemptions at very reasonable price point. Because Qatar, both the country and the airline, have been working towards more international recognition. By leveraging the airline product, making it reasonably available to as many people as possible, it has gained not just the international awareness, but also the reputation. Unlike some other premium airlines making their high tier product so exclusive that only the wealthy can get on, but a totally different strategy to make it available to more middle class people like most of us to enjoy. Qatar Airways has checked off every box as they can, it is simply hard to find anything to fault them, but there is one. Well, make it one and a half. If you watched my previous video, you know how furious I was having my Q-Suite swap out last minute. Apparently, Qatar is one of the notorious offenders that often change their plane last minute, and if that happens to you, don't expect any compensation. My previous flight with Q-Suite was downgraded to this ancient seat. Qatar needs to better manage its inventory and be more sensitive swapping out Q-Suites. It is a superior product, but also a superior dissatisfaction when it's taken away from you. Another issue, not exactly a complaint but a concern, with the Q-Suite setting such a high standard, it places its first class in a predicament. 
The line between the Q suite and the first class is hard to define. The first class seat doesn't even have a door, but it does have more space for sure. So how can Qatar market its first class moving forward? The first class in the A380 will soon be retired along with the planes, and the new first class will most likely be in the 777X. It would be hard for Qatar to make the first class not just a first class, but also distinctively different enough from the Q suite. At the same time, the Q suite is also due for an upgrade according to their leadership. What a time to be alive in this premium aviation industry. And lastly, let me tell you how many miles and which program I use to redeem this flight. I use 70,000 Cathay Pacific Asia miles plus $20 to redeem both the previous flights from Manila to Doha together with these current flights to Stockholm. What a steal. And with that, I'll see you in the next flight. A series of thin air is coming up.